Warning, the following presentation contains cold, hard truths that might change the way you think. Viewer discretion won't do you any good now. Did I tell you to stop? Keep going. I... I can't. My heart feels like it's gonna explode. Please. That's the point. Now clean your plate. Jesus Christ. This chick isn't even badass. She's just... an ass. It's been over a year since the 10th game in the Ghost Recon franchise was released, and it is quite the far cry from the first Ghost Recon. But this is a series that has always been centered around politically charged action storylines where you play as the Ghosts, a four-player U.S. elite special operations tactical unit, usually tasked with taking down ultra-nationalists, drug cartels, or renegade rebel forces. So basically, it's Tom Clancy. Now, when looking at the history of Ghost Recon titles released between 2001 and now, one could say that their reception has been very up and down, and Ubisoft took a big risk on this one, because to put it bluntly, it doesn't actually feel that much like a Ghost Recon game. That is mainly due to the fact that this is the first title in the series to feature open world gameplay. Mountains, forests, salt flats, deserts, farms, you get drones, motorcycles, helicopters and trucks, planes and boats, and just so many things to do at all times that all reward you with useful shit. New weapons, skill points, resource points, clothing, intel to reveal more stuff. It will take you a while to do all of this. This. But let's cut right through the cheese. Although not perfect, Ghost Recon Wildlands is underrated as shit. Not only is it a great stealth game that often demands patience and strategy, but it's also packed with an insane amount of ridiculous action. Although Wildlands went on to win various Game Informer awards and has received plenty of acclaim from a handful of critics, a bigger handful of critics just found the game to be boring and repetitive, and a small handful of critics just plain hated the game. Destructoid's Mike Cosimano called it a bad fucking game. Although, if you read this guy's entire review, it's filled with some pretty questionable statements, like the section where he attempts to throw a jab at the co-op mode, but admits that his mic wasn't working at the time, and that the co-op actually works perfectly on a technical level. Then he explains that he actually hated the co-op because he kept on instantly failing at a stealth tailing mission. It sounds like you and your friends just really suck at the game. I had absolutely no problem with those tailing missions, and I'm really not that good. Come to think of it, those are actually some of the easiest missions in the game. I'm not even kidding. It's curious to see a game released in 2017 implement an objective that is irredeemably terrible and not enjoyed by a single human being on planet Earth. Man, you must really suck at this game. Either that or it was a bug and this guy should have just relaunched the game. Wildlands is a bad fucking game. It's a bad co-op game, it's a bad shooter, it's a bad open world game, and the writing is terrible. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Now, we do have to address the unfortunate elephant in the room. Some people have pointed out that Ghost Recon Wildlands sort of works as pro-US intervention propaganda. This game receives some serious flack in general just for depicting the country of Bolivia as some rampant narco-state war zone. Wildlands is repugnant for the way it blindly celebrates the many evils wrought on the innocent in these places. You know, I can't really argue with that statement. The US was accused of some horrible human rights violations in the Chapare region during the 1980s, and a study done by the Harvard Review of Latin America found that the US eradication of coca in Bolivia had virtually no effect on drug presence in the US. And what makes this game look even more stupid is the fact that Bolivia had even better luck in counter-narcotics efforts by having a president who loves cocaine, but not in the evil drug lord kind of way. In more of an indigenous, spiritual way. Their current president, Evo Morales, is a true cocalero activist, which is a union of coca growers who resisted the US eradication of coca. So is Ghost Recon Wildlands just one giant propaganda piece against him and his efforts? Hey, this is a video game. 
It's supposed to be a wacky fantasy world. And come on, it's not that bad. If they hurt her, I'll burn this whole fucking country down to get back at them. Right there with you, man. All right, I probably wouldn't have gone with that line. Doesn't matter what country we're talking about. But on the other hand, this is Tom Clancy. Most of the stuff this guy wrote was just dripping with pro-military Republican nationalism. Oh, Tom, you silly old goat. A surprising amount of people complained that the game didn't spend enough time participating in the culture of Bolivia. You know, this isn't Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. It's a game about shooting. That's it. But I will admit, I wouldn't mind a little more traditional Bolivian music thrown into the mix. Now let's be honest. Video game critics have absolutely no right to complain about the violence and bad moral values that may or may not exist in this game. Now you guys decide to have a moral compass? What about when Grand Theft Auto V was released? You know, the game that lets you mass murder citizens, hijack airplanes, pick up hookers, murder hookers, murder strippers, smoke meth. How did all the critics feel about that game? Oh, not a single negative review. Not even a single mixed review. Nobody even had a mixed feeling about it. I find that interesting. I mean, I get it. GTA V is a masterpiece, and we're allowed to make fun of our country, just not other countries. That's fair, I guess. If anyone asks, this is just a nice patriotic fairy tale about some good old American soldiers stomping out the drug lords and liberating the nice foreign country folk. Sure, the story might feel like something out of Bush Sr.'s wet dream diary, but that doesn't change the fact that this is an amazing game that is so damn fun to play. There's also a disclaimer that says the game has nothing to do with the actual real-life Bolivia, although this was probably added in after they got all the complaints. And really, when you take in the amount of bullshit the game offers, that statement could not be more true. Now let's finally get to the game itself. First of all, for the amount of people complaining about the long load times in this game, look what it's loading. This gigantic world that the entire game takes place in. There's just one enormous map that makes GTA V look like the inside of a bathtub. I really gotta stop comparing this to GTA V. The two games are nothing alike. Ghost Recon is more fun. But here we have gameplay that is essentially the Phantom Pain on crack and with co-op. You roam the open world being as stealth as possible or just guns blazing as you complete various story missions and side quests while interrogating and abusing lots of people to get intel on the Santa Blanca cartel. When you come upon enemies, you do recon on them, take them out, and loot their entire outpost. You liberate and employ more and more rebel fighters who help you take over each outpost and they do help. You upgrade skills, upgrade weapons, and do this over and over and over again and so far after about eight months of playing, it has not gotten old. I sure have, but it hasn't. Although the main focus is to knock out each head of the cartel, you are given a lot of mission variety. You can hijack bank trucks, intimidate Sicarios, locate hidden supplies, tag supply trucks, destroy factories and cocaine stocks, destroy coca farms, steal intel, kidnap drug lords, destroy a casino, rescue rebels that will fight on your side, defend outposts, fight predator, steal helicopters, steal planes, Oh my god. Fuck, we just lost the plane. Oh god damn it. Everybody fall back. Oh man, and I embarrass myself in front of these cows too. Yeah, that's right, you didn't see nothing. You can steal boats, protect important public figures, hack computers, locate hidden underground tunnels, locate dead people, and my personal favorite. <laughs> The off-road motorcycle mechanics in this game are preposterously amazing. This is just absurd. You know, I think these might be my favorite motorcycle riding mechanics I've ever seen in any game. And you know why? Because you land every jump. You don't even have to look where you're going. Now that's motorcycle riding.
Traveling through this world is not boring to do, and this is where the notion that this is a bad open world game really begins to sound stupid. Ghost Recon Wildlands is the biggest game world in any Ubisoft title to date. That means Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, all the other Tom Clancy games. And playing in co-op works perfectly within the massive map that you and your teammates play on together. This takes drop-in co-op to a whole other level, because I don't think I've seen any other game where you and another player can be on the complete opposite sides of a map that's this gigantic and still be playing together on the same map. With all players seamlessly entering and exiting each other's missions at will. Although the world is massive, finding each other and fast traveling to each other could not be easier. And if you don't want to fast travel to each other, you and your friends can split up and all reap the rewards of whatever the other player does, as long as they've accepted the mission that's being done. These are the things that a lot of MMOs and open world co-op games tend to screw up or make very tedious. Sharing quests with each other, finding each other, and just playing with each other in general. <clears throat> <clears throat> no Man's Sky. Here, all you have to do is select a mission, and it will automatically ask the other players if they want to join. And they always can. Even if one player hasn't yet unlocked a certain mission, they can still do it if the other player does have it unlocked. And actually get credit for it, too. <clears throat> Far Cry 5. In fact, just like Far Cry, this whole game can be played entirely out of order in single or multiplayer. I don't recommend doing it, but you can fly to any part of the map and do anything you want whenever you want, as long as you've revealed those missions by finding enough intel. It's also important to know that when it comes to the co-op, the game does become harder the more players you have on your team. If it feels that way, you are not crazy. In fact, the game is so much easier in single player because you get to play alongside your AI teammates. These guys are way better than any garbage friends of yours that you'd otherwise have on your team. The AI teammates can use sync shot, their sniping is always perfect, and also, it's so much fun to dress these guys up and give them silly costumes. I've made Holt the redneck guy who got a hold of some advanced technology and you better watch the fuck out. Midas is the guy who doesn't speak a word but is clearly the coolest one on the team who also kicks the most amount of ass. None of that is reflected in the game. That's just my own added backstory. And Weaver is... Uh... A guy. These guys are just fun to look at. There's nothing like rallying your squad and just looking cool. Whoa! 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 Oh my god. Where the hell did they come from? That truck was empty and they just materialized into it. But one thing that you can't do in single player is fuck with your friends. Here I just decided to fly my drone right into my friend's helicopter blade. <laughs> what a sucker. The RPG mechanics in this game are perfect for a third and first person shooter. You're always able to just run around and shoot people for experience points. And shooting people in this game feels really good. The reason for this is that bassy, thick thud sound that you hear every time you pop someone. Oh yeah. Tell me that doesn't feel good and bad at the same time. I also recommend turning on all of the HUD display settings, especially the one that lets you see how much experience you've gained from killing each person. Now you're not just taking someone's life, but you're also seeing exactly what you get in return. Now, besides killing people, there are more than enough ways to go run off and level yourself up. Just look at all of the beautiful missions. What? is a vagina. Can you tell me what that is? Because I'm really starting to forget what one looks like. I think this game is so addictive because you can easily just keep bouncing along from mission to mission, exploring the map and constantly picking shit up. I mean, it is constant. You find one thing, then you find something else right after that. Then a mission is beaten. Then you reveal another mission. Then something else pops up. There is no such thing as a dull moment in this game. Look at this. I barely have any time to get to this radio tower. I accidentally crash my helicopter into the tower. I managed to survive the crash. I get ambushed by enemies. I managed to take them out and reach the control panel with only seven seconds to spare. The game is filled with moments like this. 
The end game progression system is actually more fun than the main one. When you do reach tier mode, every time you level up brings you new rewards. You can also upgrade weapons now. Tier mode also eventually forces you to play in harder difficulties, but you can always turn it off and go back to an easier difficulty. Something that might please people who didn't like the division is the fact that with the exception of the Predator, there aren't any bullet sponge enemies in this game. No matter how high of a level you reach, the enemy enemy's defenses will never be artificially leveled to necessitate grinding. Now, I personally think the graphics in this game are pretty goddamn good. Sure, there are texture pop-ins and yada yada, who gives a shit? You might see some scaling back on detail here and there, but if you just stop moving and let the pixels settle... Oh man. Everything just looks bizarrely real. Not just in terms of the graphics, but also in the topography and the actual layout of the landscapes and towns. Everything just looks like it was copied straight off of Google Earth satellite imagery. Just look at the view from a helicopter. Tell me that's not a photocopy of an actual aerial view of land. Look at the helicopter blades spinning. I mean, really. The realism also reflects in the gameplay itself. The lighting in this game plays a huge factor in trying to stay hidden. Being under a shadow actually makes you less visible to enemies, and being under broad daylight is actually like asking to be shot. But the singular thing that truly sold me on the gameplay of Wildlands was the skill system and upgrades that you have at your disposal, with particular notice to the flying of a drone all over the place to do recon. It's like the little RC car from Rainbow Six, only four billion times better. If you are not taking advantage of the drone, you are not even playing this game. You're on your couch holding the controller with the TV off and you're just sitting there. The drone is essential. The first thing I do whenever I get to an enemy infested area is get down on the ground and hide, deploy the drone, and start tagging enemies. This right here will definitely be among my all time favorite video game pastimes. Just zipping around in this drone and marking enemies. I know I say that things never get old, a lot, but hey, that phrase never gets old. And the amount of skills that you can unlock for the drone, infinite battery life, longer range, faster speed, thermal sight, the ability to remotely revive dead teammates, an EMP ability that disables enemy electronics and vehicles, and my favorite, the explosion. And you can of course upgrade the size of the explosion to a bigger and bigger radius. The feeling you get from nailing a remote explosion. It's like you're having your own little remote explosion, if you know what I mean. You can even fly it into buildings and see exactly where important items are hidden. But there is nothing more fun than flying this drone around. If our country commits a bunch of horrific drone strikes in the next few years, I'm going to sound like a total asshole. Another extremely helpful tactic to take advantage of that I'm totally going to gloss over is the use of rebel forces to come to your aid during battle. They can distract enemies, straight up shoot the enemies for you. They can launch mortar attacks on the enemies, deploy for you an escape vehicle, and most importantly, they can spot enemies for you. That one you should just use all the time. And you can of course upgrade each of these rebel skills by completing some of the many side quests scattered all over the map. Another thing that I'm going to seriously gloss over is the PvP mode. The PvP exists, that is all. Now as you can see, Ghost Recon Wildlands is a game that has a lot to offer and is overall very unshitty. But let's talk about the stuff that is not unshitty. Shooting from cars is not great. It's completely unstabilized and also a little nauseating, whereas shooting on foot is really smooth and noticeably easier. Shooting from helicopters is even less great. You have no aim range, you can't see what the pilot sees, and the pilot must be facing away from the enemies entirely in order for the gunner to see them. I get that it's more realistic, but hey, it fucking sucks. What can I tell you? When you are shooting from a helicopter's gun, it takes weirdly long to hit a person. I mean, look, I have a Gatling gun right on this guy for like six seconds and I'm somehow missing. I don't love that. The game also has its fair share of really silly bugs. Here I'm just minding my own business and then I suddenly fall through the ground, revealing this salvia-like nightmare where I actually fall to my death. 
It hasn't happened that many times, but like with Salvia, I choose not to revisit it. Another really annoying bug is the Watchman Mission Failed pop-up that just keeps going and going and going. This one has happened a little more than several times. That's just cute. Or how about this bug that happens when you use the rebels to spot a location? Sometimes the white circle just stays there. And since it's this game, when I first saw this I thought that someone had just sprayed a bunch of cocaine across the landscape. But nah, just a bug. But the one thing we can all agree on is that the biggest, most universal offender in this game is the story. Sometimes, and I think about the bad things we do for the good of our country. Travel overseas, take some lives, ruin others. And I'd do it all again, in a heartbeat. Just no. No, 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 and no. I wonder, if God knew all the destruction that this little leaf would bring, would she have still created it? Or maybe that's exactly why she did. Ugh. I'm all for saying that God is a woman. But the way it's just thrown in there like that, multiple times in a row. I mean, what is the point of trying to be feminist in this game? This is such a testosterone-ridden gaming experience that for some reason has this external appendage of a storyline that revolves around a singular female character who is never once physically present during actual gameplay. She just talks to you via walkie the whole time. She doesn't even have a sprite on the gameplay map. You don't see her fly by in a chopper and wave hello. Nothing. She just exists as this entity that only manifests in cutscenes, which all take place inside a shack that I can say without spoiling anything. So you really never see her leave the shack at all that I can say without spoiling anything. But that's really it. Other than that, this is one of my favorite games I have ever played. Yeah. I am not joking. It is that fun. To all the critics who ragged on this game and said it contained boring ass missions, I think that just means your testicles have shriveled to the size of raisins and you have lost all semblance of up and down. The game is not perfect, but can you name a more fun co-op open world RPG shooter that's also co-op open world and an RPG? and has sniping? Right now, I would say the Tom Clancy franchise has got that subgenre by the balls. The Division was phenomenal, and although very different, Wildlands does kind of feel like a step up from that. To say that hopes are high for The Division 2 would be the understatement of the millennium. I think we can all agree when we say, please don't cancel that game. Please cancel the Jake Gyllenhaal Division movie instead. Not a single fan would rather time and effort be poured into that than a sequel to the game. And we're talking about one of my all-time favorite actors. But rest in peace, Tom Clancy. Thank you for selling your name to Ubisoft for an undisclosed sum and allowing for all these minorly underrated games to be produced. And everyone else? Young, 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 young